Inside the sugar house and out in the woods, I have a tremendous amount of pride in what I've done. Um, everything in the sugar house is about looks, it's about showing off our sugar house, and that we really have attention to detail in everything that we do. From the inside of the sugar house to the finished product and syrup, we're very detail oriented. When we started making syrup, I was using my great-grandfather's buckets over the, and boiling the sap from them with the open fire. When I started making syrup here, we initially used some of his buckets, but then as te technology's changed, we've had to put the buckets on the shelf to display them. They're still in their sugar house, we just don't use them anymore. I needed to learn everything about maple syrup to make the best maple syrup I could. Going to classes all over New England proved to be one of the best opportunities. Once you start looking for classes to learn about maple syrup, it's kind of astronomical the amount of classes and what different pieces really go into making syrup, whether it's managing the woodlots, going and learning about tubing systems, hands-on, how to build the systems, how to run your evaporator the most efficiently is probably the key to anyone that makes maple syrup taking advice from older sugar makers that have been doing it a lot longer than myself, the seasoned veterans would really give you the insight on marketing, on tubing system layout, how you could really maximize your time in the sugar house, as well as be able to work full time. With the technology, we're able to make more syrup on the same amount of trees. We clip it underneath and we're hooked in. So now we can go a long ways back in the woods and bring the sap close to the road and then bring it back to the sugar house. And on to the next tank. So this is our biggest piece of woods. There's 1,100 taps come in here, so the majority of our syrup is made up just this one piece of woods. We're in here pretty much from September through the first part of April. The difference between using vacuum and, na and natural gravity is that with vacuum, you can double your sap production. In five years, we've changed everything that we've done other than making syrup using wood. Using air to increase the boiling temperatures, reverse osmosis to remove the water from the sap, even filtering the syrup now with higher capacity units that make a clearer, high quality product. Everything's about efficiency and learning all the time. I've come a long ways in five years. That's say the least. One of the traditional things that remains that we still do every day in the sugar house is we still burn wood to make the syrup and then we're testing syrup. We're trying to make the highest quality syrup every day that we boil. Now we're just a touch heavy. Just about perfect right there. When we're making syrup we're constantly sampling it, tasting it, looking for the off flavors, looking for changes in flavors. We've also got my daughters the taste test experts. They're the quality control when we're making syrup in their sugar house, as well as the friends and family that are here, because we're looking to make syrup that we want to eat every day and that we enjoy. When I'm out there, I see myself as a steward of the land, doing everything to facilitate the growth of the trees, to have the trees produce the most sap that they can. And when I'm doing that, it's me, the dog, and the time alone, listening to the birds, looking for deer, Maple syrup to me brings friends and family together, friends that I don't get to see anymore due to work changes, lifestyle changes. It brings those people back together, the people that I truly care about and they help me make maple syrup and we enjoy the time that we're in the sugar house. My kids are down here, my wife, it's truly a family and friend event. 